Hello YouTube. Today we're going to apply actuals to our P6 schedule and this will involve creating backup, identifying the period for update with uh, Progress Spotlight, then applying the dates, the hours, the expenses, and finally rescheduling the project. So we're back in our new car project and we're ready to actually start the project now. So we'll assume that um, we've gone forward a month in time and we're ready to do uh, an update. In other words, apply actuals to our project. So the first thing we have to do um, is think about uh, safety and we should be making a backup of our project because this is a time when things could go wrong dramatically. So we need to make sure that we've got um, a copy of our project available just in case things do go wrong. So the way we do that is we go back to the projects window we highlight the new car project and we right click on it and we say that we want to make a copy. We then come over to the right, find the paste button, hit paste. We then start getting asked some questions. So what do we want to include? All of these good things. And we've got a baseline there, so we'll want to include the baseline as well. So OK. Uh, that is the baseline, uh, which is the project baseline. So we say OK to that. Now it wants to know the WBS elements. Yes, we want everything. It's a full copy. And now it wants to know the activity elements. So, yep, we want everything to be included in this. So, OK to that. It now goes away, creates a copy. And there is the copy in the same node under construction projects. But you can see the ID now has a dash 1 against it. And what we should be doing is... Um, changing the status of that to what if so that we don't start double dipping on uh, resources so to do that notice it's grayed out at the moment the project actually has to be open in order to change the status of the project so make sure car one has now open um, status is now active and we can change from a status of active to what if. That means the resources in the copy will not be double counted whenever we do resource analysis in the future. Notice that um, a yellow question mark goes over the project folder to give us a visual indication that it is indeed what if. So we've got our copy and it's in the correct status. So we can now reopen our original. Let's see in the header. Uh, the original has now opened. We're in the activities window and we're ready to uh, go forward in time and status each of the activities that has had work done on it in that period. So having made the copy, the next thing we have to do is highlight through the spotlight function here. Hit progress spotlight and the yellow beam shines down. goes forward a week by default. Um, and we need to drag this right hand edge to the new data date, which in our case is the 18th of August. So we drag, watching that little calendar box, till we find the 18th of August. When we see that, we release the left mouse button. Whoops, over a bit. Release. And the Data date is now in the correct new position. So it's telling us, it's highlighting for us those activities that need to be updated or that we think will be updated in this um, in this particular period. So people will now be reporting to us on the progress they've made on the activities in this uh, in this period. So we have two basically. We've got the level of effort one that should have had some work done on it, and we've got. Um, a1020, which should have had some work done on it. Uh, we don't anticipate any work being done on any of the later activities. So having highlighted the activity activities, we then go to the first one and status it. So that means we come down to the tabs at the bottom, hit the status tab, and we have to be told by the people doing the work whether it did in fact start on the planned start date of the 21st of July. We will assume that it did, so tick. And 
we don't need to change the date. It did start on the 21st. If it had started on the 22nd, we would have to say that by going into the calendar and choosing whichever date it did start on. However, we'll assume it started on the 21st. Um, it hasn't finished yet. We don't expect it to finish right until the 2nd of January. When we're in that situation where something has started but not finished, then we are required to give an estimate of remaining duration. At the moment it's saying 120, but we need to change that. Um, and we'll assume that we've done 20 days work and that we have 100 days still to go. So we type in there remaining duration 100 days. Whenever we're doing an update, there are three things we need to update on every activity. First one is the dates, the start date, finish date, or remaining duration. Um, the second thing we need to update are the resource hours involved. And the third thing we need to update are expenses, if any expenses were involved in that activity. So we've done the dates. Now we do the resources for our level of effort, project admin. And notice that um, the computer has put in um, figures from the data that we've just put in. So we said 100 days remaining, um, which meant 20 days had been done. So it's put in actual regular hours of um, 160. So 20 days at eight hours a day, 160 hours. Now, it may be the case that, you know, that our resource didn't work at 160, in which case we change that. And it may be the case that um, we anticipate there, there won't be 800 days remaining, in which case we change that. However, in this instance, we'll assume that that is correct. No need to change anything. Expenses, no expenses in this particular one. So we come back to status and on to the next activity, which in this case is 1010 which is a milestone. You can see from the Gantt chart there, it's a diamond, so a milestone. We need to be told, did it start? Did the project start on the 21st? Yes, it did, so tick. Notice the computer ticks finished automatically. It's a milestone, there is no duration, so as soon as it starts, it finishes, and the computer knows that. And that's all you do with a, a milestone. Uh, there are no resource hours on a milestone, and um, usually you don't put expenses on a milestone. So that's all you generally do with the milestone. So we can now go forward to the next activity, 1020. Here's our um, activity, 20 days long, Jeff Young working on it. Let's assume that it started, but not on the 21st. Let's assume there was a delay for whatever reason, a week's delay. So instead of starting on the 21st, we actually had to wait till the 20. 8th to start. We haven't started yet, which means we haven't finished. We will push to the right of our um, current or new data date. So we've started, we haven't finished. Um, how many days do we estimate are remaining? Well, we've slipped by five days, so um, we've gone forward a month, so we anticipate that there are still five days remaining to be done. Put that in, we enter it, and the computer works out that we've done 75% of the um, job. Notice that what we see in the Gantt chart at this point in time, before we've scheduled, is not correct. So don't make any decisions at this point in time looking at the Gantt chart. It's not right until we reschedule. So remember, every activity, when you're updating it, requires three inputs. First the dates, then the resource hours, then the expenses. So resource hours, it's put in um, information based on what we put in the status tab. So it's assuming that um, there's 30 hours still remaining, and anticipating that um, 90 have been done. It's on a six hour day, so there's a little problem there that we'll have to sort out later on. But at six hours a day, that is correct. 
so we don't need to make any changes there uh, expenses there are no expenses on this one so that's it for this one there is no work done on the rest so that's the end of the update as far as we're concerned in this first month so having updated all of the activities involved then we are um, obliged to reschedule so we turn off the spotlight we go to our scheduling button and we have to put in the new data date so remember we said the new data date was the 18th of August so we're going from the start of the project 21 July forward a month to the 18th of August which is a Monday remember the data date represents the beginning of a working day so it's not taking any of this Monday the 18th into account it's doing everything up to the end of Friday the 15th assuming that we don't work weekends so it's capturing everything to the end of Friday the 15th so traditionally you would put uh, you know the next Monday if you start your work, working week on a Monday you would put the next Monday as the appropriate um, new data date so we select that 18th of August and we're now ready to schedule so when we press schedule the computer will do a, a forward pass through all the activities uh, working out the earliest every activity can start and finish when it gets to the end it'll turn around do a backward pass working out the latest that every activity can start and finish so let's do that we schedule Bing computer does it for us and now what we see in the Gantt chart is correct so this particular uh, activity was delayed you can see it's slipping away from its um, baseline because they're all linked finish to start then we're getting this sort of shunting effect like in a whole um, row of wagons on a train I think shunts forward because they're all linked um, and this one delaying has pushed this one this non-critical one the selling activity forward and its mate has gone forward and this delay on the final activity in the critical path the red path through here uh, you can see that our finish um, milestone has moved away from the original uh, planned finish date so we've slipped five days all the way down through the critical path we look at our float we can see we've still got nine days of positive so we're not yet beyond our project must finish by date but we are slipping so that should be a cause for concern and at this point in time the project manager should be thinking mm, what can I do to um, get things back on track to accelerate things you can see that um, the level of effort here um, is not showing the work that's been done on the level of effort it's sort of giving you the mistaken impression that you know the level of effort's been delayed but that is not the case so that's a problem with the bars the way the bars are showing um, so at the moment we've only got remaining level of effort which is that dark green bar that we see and we haven't got the actual work done on that level of effort activity so we'd need to tick that one on which was a blue bar if we applied that you would now see that that completed work is visible in your Gantt chart and the remaining work is, is visible as well uh, one other thing to talk about at this point in time is um is the baselines so remember when we created the baseline we said it was a three um, stage affair first we went to maintain baselines and added a new baseline B1 then we went to the assign baselines dialog box and put in B1 as a primary user baseline so we've assigned the, um, the baseline and then we went into the bars dialog the third stage 
and ticked on the primary baseline and its milestone in order to see them in the Gantt chart. So it's a three-stage thing. Now I just wanted to show you what would happen if we had this ticked in here in the bars dialog, but we hadn't assigned the milestone. I just want to show you what that does. So we've got slippage indicated, which is correct at this moment in time. If I unassign the baseline now, so take it away and make it back to current project, say OK. Notice that um, after the data date, everything uh, now sits on its baseline as though there was no slippage because we're seeing current project. In other words, we're seeing the current position of every bar reflected in the baseline. So that is in fact a false baseline, a false baseline, giving you entirely the wrong picture of what is going on at this point in time. So whenever you are using baselines, you must make sure you do those three things. Create it, assign it, and make it visible in the Gantt chart. And then we're seeing the correct picture now. So that's it. That's um, an update, a first update for our car project. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to tick like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.